What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had taken a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, June 7th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other viruses that can be a health threat to you. There's a lot of viruses out there. Bird flu. There's something new happening with bird flu just about every day. Want to stay informed with everything that's going on? Subscribe to my channel down below. Like the video you see. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with anyone you know. Leave a comment down below. And remember to hit that notification bell. That way you're notified of each and every update. All right, we do have just a few news stories today. Then we have some of our daily data and weekly CDC data. I was saying yesterday, new variant update would be next week. I was wrong. Today is the new variant update. So we do have new variant data. You do want to stay tuned for that. There are major changes in the COVID variant picture here in the United States. Starting off first, wastewater in Austin, Texas has been found to contain traces of H5N1 bird flu, according to Austin Public Health. They also say it is important to note that current influenza trends are low and that the detection of influenza virus in wastewater does not necessarily indicate undetected human cases. This is coming from Infectious Disease Tracker. Moving over to Australia now, Dennis, the COVID info guy, posts great stuff. We have shared what he posts many times before, and in this case, he's talking about Australian residential aged care facilities as of June 6, 2024. Active cases, 4,413. That's up by 232, so their surge has not yet peaked. Active outbreaks, 499. That's up by 32 residents that are infected 3051 that's up by 164 staff 1362 that's up by 68 reported deaths in 2024 503 that is up by 49 remember in australia right now while we're entering summer here in the united states it is entering winter over in australia right now all right this is not good Ontario, I think we mentioned this the other day. Well, here's an article confirming it. Absolutely brutal. Ontario is going to end COVID-19 wastewater surveillance program. Yeah, just totally ridiculous. I mean, wastewater is not only good for COVID, but all these other viruses. If you notice, we're starting to use it for H5N1 as well. And here they want to end it in Ontario. Just totally ridiculous. We may take a look at some Canadian wastewater in just a few moments. All right, taking a look here at Wastewater Scan. They made a little thread on X, and I'll read this to you. Wastewater Scan Weekly Data. COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 levels have increased over the last three weeks, and we are in high category nationally with medium concentrations. The West has especially high levels measured recently and you can see that here on this chart that's a chart i've been sharing on x and on here as well number two influenza flu a is in the low category nationally and in all regions since iav was detected in 50 percent or less of samples tested over the last two weeks nationally and in all regions flu b is in the low category as well h5 now bird flu here h5 so far h5 has been detected in five states over the last three weeks texas Minnesota, Idaho, Iowa, and of course Michigan as well, with new information on cattle with H5N1 in Iowa and Minnesota in the past couple days. All states with detections have had infected cattle. And then HMPV they talk about, and a bunch of other things, including norovirus. Let's read about norovirus. Norovirus is in the high category, but with a downward trend nationwide and in some regions over the past three weeks. The Midwest is the only region in medium category with medium concentrations of that. Uh, UK did update yesterday. They didn't update the healthcare, right? They just updated cases. Cases were down slightly, 1,604. That was down by 172 percent taking a look now what is going on with the pollen levels across the united states and 60 percent of the country is in the medium status red today in oregon anywhere in yellow or orange or better you need to be 
taking your allergy medicine. Alrighty, moving on now to air quality in the United States. Uh, some places did improve today, and I think we should see the Northeast. Yes, the East Coast did improve. The Gulf Coast states, you're still seeing some yellow. We're still seeing some yellow and even oranges in Texas, and a lot of yellow on the West Coast with oranges down in the Los Angeles area. Heat-related illnesses, map is slowly filling in, and if long-range projections are correct, uh, it's going to get hotter within a couple weeks for a large majority of the country. Therefore, this map will really start to fill in. Want to learn more about climate? I do have a place that I do that on X. It is at Climate Data Report. And I do have another YouTube channel, Climate Data Report. I've started posting there once again. We'll see how long it lasts. If it becomes too much, I'll take a hot or I'll just do the YouTube Shorts option. So if you want to learn more about this and today's severe weather threat, you can go over there. I did post a video there this morning. All right, have to show you this. Philadelphia, 902 EMS incidents were reported on Thursday. Yes, that is a very high number of EMS incidents in one day. Let's take a look at what's going on in Montgomery County right now. And wow, just only five incidents. So uh, that's really good. Uh, one's for respiratory emergency. Yeah, it's a really a slow time right now in Montgomery County, at least today at the very moment, it is one o'clock on a Friday over in Chester County, Pennsylvania, a little bit of a different story. We see some more calls. We see sick person mentioned a couple times, respiratory difficulty, stroke, heart problems, cardiac arrest. I never like seeing cardiac arrest listed. That is not good whatsoever. And now moving on to Walgreens for this week, 22.9% positivity rate. The prior week is 18.6%. That's a difference of up 4.3%. All right, drum roll, please. We do have some new data from the CDC. And let me refresh this. I was playing around with the map a little bit ago. It looks like some of the uh, wastewater sites in the New York City area may have come back on this map. But something else that is coming back is the number of sites that's red or orange that number is increasing and we're seeing 18 sites now in the red that's the highest level for covid uh 60 to 79 percent those orange sites that's now up by seven that's up to uh, 88 sites and we can see here there is now even a red site what's this in florida i want to click on this i'm just now noticing this this data just came in before i started uh, this video we're a little early today got a busy afternoon expected uh sarasota Florida, take a look at this. Wow, 100,000 population, and it's literally going straight up. The south, in the summertime, they usually do see their wave, and then later in the summer, this wave usually spreads to the north. We'll have to see if that's actually the case. Modeling suggests in the United States that we remain flat until the end of June. We'll see. Uh, expecting, hopefully, to see a update from our COVID modeling experts, maybe some point today or over the weekend. And we can see here, I just want to zoom in real quickly. Yeah, this definitely seems more fuller in the New York City area. Remember how it used to come up on this little uh, New York City thing here? Well, now it looks like it's coming up just separately. Let's click on a couple of these. And here's one in New York City, Kings. Looks like it had a rise back in maybe April, and then it dropped. I don't know how reliable some of this data is, to be honest with you. Here's another one. It rose, and now it's starting to drop somewhat. Hey, here's Queens. That's starting to drop. We'll get into this more on uh, Sunday when we do our actual wastewater update. But I did want to show you this. We do have for, you know, national wastewater. You know, when you take a state, you take all the wastewater sites put together, and then you get a result, and that's what they do here. California is high. Moderate in Alaska. Hawaii is very high. Florida is high. And look at this. New York State is minimal. And I would agree with that. We're hardly seeing any increase in the hospitalizations. You can't really go by cases in New York State because so many people don't even bother to get tested. There was an ever so slight increase, which was it really even wasn't much of an increase. And wastewater says there's not much going on in New York State right now. Then you take a look at what's going on in Idaho. It's moderate. So things are still bouncing around. And there's a reason for that. We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, let's take a look at Canadian. Canada for a second. Let me refresh this. Let's see what's going on from the Canadian perspective. And we do see that 16% of the sites are decreasing. 30 have no change. 16 uh, sites are increasing. 3 are high. 3 are moderate. 17 low. 39 new sites. Of course, all this could change soon because Ontario may just do away with their sites. So there may be less sites here relatively soon. 
All right, taking a look now at this epidemic status. We're not going to read all the states. Maybe over the weekend we will, but I want you to be mindful. COVID is likely growing or is now growing in, I would say, the majority of the states. And there's a lot of uh, likely growing places that have popped up. It's just starting to uh, become likely growing now in some of the northeast states. New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island. All are starting to likely grow. This is new this week that we're seeing so many states in the northeast. So that's just the early signs that, hey, maybe something's starting up there. And then taking a look at Alaska. Alaska is definitely growing. And of course, Hawaii, we know, has been uh, seeing a big surge. They started off from very low levels, and then they really rapidly went up as recently California, and you can see here the West Coast right now is where the epic center is of any type of surge in the United States, while the East hasn't really done much just yet, although Georgia is now shifted to growing, and in the Midwest, Illinois is now shifted to growing as well. All right, drum roll, please. We have new variant data in. Maybe you expected it. Maybe you didn't expect it. I at least expected some of it, but I think it might have even exceeded my expectations. KP.3 is now in the lead at 25%. KP.2 has dropped to 22.5%. Well, why has that dropped? It's dropped for more than one reason. Not only has KP.3 jumped into the lead, but now we have an LB.1, which is rapidly going up. I don't even I didn't even look to see what it was last week. Uh, LB.1 is now at 14.9%. That happened rather quickly. Could it be that KP.3 being in the lead becomes short-lived because LB.1 is going up so fast? I don't know, but we are in clearly in variant soup. It's lunchtime right now. Today on the menu, we have COVID variant soup. And I mean, there's a KP 1.1 at 7.5%. JN 1.11.1 at 4.4%. JN 1.7 at 3.7%. XDV.1, don't know anything about that, is at 3.4%. JN 0.1.16.1 is at 3.3%. The key takeaway is KP 0.3 just jumped ahead. The target vaccine for fall was going to be J. N.1. Now, it is a distant descendant of the JN.1 variant, but the point I'm trying to drive across here is that uh, this variant picture, it is rapidly evolving. Uh, second one variant takes a lead, another one comes up ahead of it. I mean, this is a very ever-changing picture, which is why, if anyone was to do a forecast, even with these COVID models, going forward is a very uncertain picture because you have a constant changing variant picture at any given time a new variant could pop up and like this lb.1 i'll be very honest with you i don't know much about it and lb.1 here all suddenly it's 14.9 percent kp.3 i think at some point in time it was expected to take a hit it might have just done so a little bit faster than expected all right moving on now i have to show you the influenza map a little bit more of a yellowish green in california today it's still low levels, but it did go up a little bit from the previous one. I can show you that here. See if we go backwards. The coloring did go up a little bit, as did in District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. And taking a look now at what is going on in New Jersey today, I do have to refresh this. And in New Jersey today, we see that for the hospital hospitalizations there are 186 people in the hospital they never really did see much of an increase for hospitalizations even after uh memorial day weekend you can see it's pretty much just staying flat and that would be very similar to what the COVID model suggests would happen in the united states hospitalizations are not going to well it predicts cases but if cases are not rising hospitalizations are going to remain level as well and that seems to be just what is happening in new jersey at this time you know they're bouncing between the 170s to sometimes the 190s but no significant rise no significant decrease hopefully we'll get new jersey reporting over the weekend 11 people are on a ventilator uh, 69 out of 70 hospitals reported 23 people in the icu discharges 41 that's actually a little bit of an increase in the number of discharges all right new york state and i do need to refresh this new york state today 773 new cases reported you can see here they are seeing an ever so slight increase in the the number of cases overall over time but it's really when you look at it, it's really nothing major at all because, again, COVID in wastewater in New York State is minimal. So I wouldn't even call it wave. I'm going back to that phrase I've been saying along for quite some time now. 
just a bump in the road. And that's pretty much what was expected for June at this point. The places that aren't seeing a bump in the road, of course, is out in the West Coast in the United States. That's more than a bump. Hawaii is more than a bump. Back to New York State. Hospitalizations actually dropped today. New York State hospitalizations, 512 people in the hospital, 51 people in the ICU. And if we look back at reports from uh, previous Friday reportings, we can see here that has incurred not one, not two, three. But this would be now be the fourth Friday in a row where they actually saw hospitalizations go down a little bit. So that's a good thing to report. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update. We will have another edition of the Pandemic Update again tomorrow. I'll have some more research done, and maybe I'll find some more news stories. Of course, the big takeaway for today is, let's go back to it, let's go back to it, KP.3 is now the leading variant in the United States. KP.2 is just behind it, 22.5%. And surprise, LB.1, which I'm going to try and learn about, is now at 14.9%. If you don't get a chance to see my weekend updates that I do this weekend, I hope you have a fantastic weekend, but do so safely. If you're new to the channel, subscribe down below, give these videos a thumbs up, hit that notification bell. It helps my channel grow. I want to keep more people informed. I want to keep as many people informed as possible. Let's see if we can, I don't know, get up to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. Wouldn't that be something? Alrighty, folks, I'll see you all again next time. Remember to leave your comments down below, share these with anyone you know, and have a fantastic Friday afternoon. But hey, stay safe everyone, and thanks for watching.